Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith. And today we'll look at a question that's still a source of great confusion to this very day. What is lust exactly? First, let's look at what the Bible has to say about lust. But I say to you that whosoever shall look on a woman to lust after her hath already committed adultery with her in his heart. Matthew 5.28 It's quite impossible for this to refer to normal appreciation of the beauty of a person or to simple attraction so long as it's kept in its proper role. Otherwise the verse, But if they do not contain themselves, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to be burned. 1 Corinthians 7.9 would be false. St. Paul is here telling people that if they can't contain their passions for a member of the opposite sex, they should marry, because that's better than being tormented by their passions. However, if mere attraction or appreciation of beauty were the same thing as lust, it wouldn't be any better to marry, because both attraction and appreciation of beauty are also present between married couples. So what is lust exactly? Lust is disordered desire for, or inordinate enjoyment of sexual pleasure. Sexual pleasure is morally disordered when sought for itself, isolated from its procreative and unitive purposes. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 2351. I've touched on this before, but the words disordered and inordinate mean literally in the wrong order. With regard to lust, this refers to the order in which we should place our priorities in relation to sex. Our priorities should be A, the creation of new life, B, uniting man and woman in their marriage, and only then, C, pleasure follows. But the pleasure itself is not bad, far from it, so long as it maintains its proper place in this order. For this reason, lust can take a few forms, but it's always about the prioritizing of lesser goods over greater in a relationship, such as caring about the beauty of a woman and refusing to appreciate her virtues, or dwelling upon overtly sexual fantasies which we can't at present possess. These things can lead a person into committing sins to try to attain them, rather than drawing us closer to God, our only legitimate way out. So, how far should we go to avoid lust? Well... There's one historic misconception in this area. And if thy right eye scandalize thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is expedient for thee that one of thy members should perish, rather than that thy whole body be cast into hell. And if thy right hand scandalize thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is expedient for thee that one of thy members should perish, rather than that thy whole body be cast into hell. Matthew 5, 29-30 since the first century A.D., the Church has always held that these statements are only figurative language, describing our need to resist natural parts of ourselves and throw away things that tempt us into evil in our lives, until such time as God can free us completely from impurity in heaven, and restore to us the freedom to use our natural members as we wish without fear of evil temptation. However, this doesn't mean we should go around amputating body parts out of some misunderstanding of these verses. Next, is heaven the natural result of our progress in virtue? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.